Oh, you know what? I have to move this closer to us, or you will not hear us. Okay. I'm going to have to figure out a way. Michelle, you are live. Say, hey, girl, hey. Hey, girl, hey. Want to tell everyone where we are while I finish setting all the goodies up? Um, we are at Taco Craft in Fort Lauderdale, and it's very cool looking here. It's making me feel like I'm not cool enough to even be here. You are cool enough. That's questionable. You are cool. Um, so we're gonna. It's gonna be a few minutes. We're gonna get everything set up. You're seeing. You are seeing the real, keep it real behind the scenes. We don't edit. We don't get our videos together. We keep it as real. I no mean, hair like, and makeup. This is happening. No, no hair. We do our own hair and makeup. Um, go on this side. No, no, I'm on this side. You know, at some point, you're going to have to relinquish yourself. I'm not going to. I'm just telling you. I discovered my good side in 2007. Yes, but sometimes you have to share. And I'm not going to share it. We're going on 11 years of me. Accepting and knowing what is and what isn't right with my body and my I face. Have the perfect solution to this what is the perfect solution? We're gonna flip a coin before every. We're gonna flip a coin. Or why don't we take a poll and see like is Michelle really better on the left or not or is she not good at all? Get her off the screen. You know what? I'm gonna tilt this down a sec. Okay. Yes. Now you can see the shirt. Do you miss my big hair? What? Do you miss my big hair? No, I love your hair. Cause like I used to have those curls. <clears throat> it's not letting me. We might not be able to record on Zoom today. This might just be a Facebook Live. Okay. Is that okay? It's fine. Okay. It's fine. All right. So, where you want me? Over there, here, next to me. Mark on in here. You right. know what? I'm really feeling this place. I love. You know, Rock Burger is my favorite. Really Talk Rock really Burger is my favorite restaurant. Of this, like, you know, there's like a chain here. We've got Taco Craft, Rock Burger, Public House. Um, what else? Um, where's Rachel? Rachel, Rock Burger, Public House, Pizza Craft, Pizza Craft, Craft. Oh, Apothecary. Apothecary. And Rock Burger is like where I want to have my birthday dinner because I love it. But when we podcasted from there last time, it was loud and dark. Well, it's, and I was more focused on my sweet potato fries than anything else. I'm, as you should be. You know, it is what it is. I'm hungry and I have to go to carpool after this. So I'm, I'm going to get it in, you know? Look at this beautiful crafted cocktail we have coming They really life. are very pretty. They're like and they're almost... pink for breast cancer awareness. Pink for breast cancer awareness. And I want to say a quick word about that because it's very important to me. Me too. My mother is a breast cancer survivor. Arlene. Five and a half years ago, she was diagnosed. It was very scary for all of us, but she pulled through like a champ. And not only that, when she had her surgery, the doctors came out and they were like, we could not shut her up. There were not enough drugs in the hospital. Sounds like our To lane. shut her up, to knock her out when well, she had her surgery. So breast cancer is obviously a very important cause in general. I have a personal connection to it. I just got my mammo. Have you gotten a mammo yet? I'm too young for a mammo. Insurance won't cover it yet. That's but crazy soon, talk. two more years. Um, but it's personal for me too. Um, I know two family members who are survivors. One who was not so lucky, and so we drink these beautiful pink drinks to you. Um, also in honor of. My boyfriend's mom, whose birthday would have been yesterday, this one's for her as well, and um, you know, with the rate that cancer is spreading and growing and affecting and touching the lives of almost everyone we know, there's nobody in this world currently who is not dealing with somebody in their circle or their extended circle um, that doesn't have to, like, there's somebody in everybody's lives, and so it should really be recognized and celebrated or brought shed light on every month of the year but we're going to do our best this year and the reason why we chose taco craft as our place to podcast and we're going to keep it really real not just because we like tacos but they're doing a whole month long uh pink taco celebration in honor of breast cancer awareness month so we're doing our part and we're keeping it real Does we it are get better than that it doesn't get better than that and we get to eat really yummy food which we both love right um in the interest of full disclosure i am wearing Spanx. I am not. I will never wear Spanx. I, I, this is one of the things we talked about when you go into it, but I never realized that Spanx would be more of an everyday thing. And I don't wear them every day to be clear, but it's it used keeping to, it real. I'm keeping it real. It used to just be you had a black tie event, you had to wear a dress, so you'd throw the Spanx on so that you were like this. I want to tell you, 
that after two children, sometimes Spanx on a Thursday are necessary. Spanx on a Thursday. My Spanx never happen because I don't even have any because I hate them. And to me, they feel like... I have a love-hate relationship with them. They feel like a human torture device, device for me. They are. Um, I will not wear something if it is perceived that this something would look better with Spanx underneath, I just won't buy it. Like, I am not doing it. I put them on, and I have no shame, so I put them on in plain view of my husband, and he's like, really? Because he doesn't think I need them. He's very sweet, but he's like, what is that? I'm like, they are Spanx, and they're coming with us. They're part of our relationship, and that's just the way it's going to be, and you're going to have to deal with it. I mean, sorry. I, maybe I would look better with them. I don't care what your opinion on that is. I just, just no. Not you have to do there. what makes you comfortable. And for me, Spanx make me feel sucked in in all the right places. That's that's good, for good, good for you. Good for you. Well, that's so. What we really wanted. So Rachel and I have a project in the works that really outlines super secret, project. super top secret that really outlines all the realness that comes from being a mom and all the things we've experienced along those. And, and continue to experience. And continue to experience. You know, it's an evolving thing with motherhood. You get through one stage, and then all of a sudden, it's something else you didn't experience. But behind the scenes, never mind what goes on with the kids and what you have to deal with, but behind the scenes, what you have to deal with personally, like the shift that happens emotionally, physically, mentally, everything. Everything. And so we are going to be touching on all those things. But a few of the things we wanted to recognize is that, look, Everyone has cellulite. Everyone. And if you say you don't, you're a liar. Because listen, my baby is nine months old and she has cellulite. It's okay? good cellulite. Though. It's good cellulite. But everybody has cellulite. Everyone. Celebrities. The hot moms who work out. The difference between a mom and everybody else is that once a mom becomes a mom and, and takes a look at her body and is like, shit, what happened here? <laughs> it's like, you know what? Fuck it. I have this beautiful child that I made within this body or maybe, you know, that I adopted and, and didn't get cellulite from, but I'm still going to love my cellulite You're now. Still gonna have cellulite. The whole point is that everybody has it, but moms get to this place where they just kind of, I'm not going to say I still work out and try really hard to look good. Yeah. Really hard. Yeah. But it's almost like I'm going to deal with what I've got because A, I want my child to grow up knowing that whatever she looks like is just fine. Totally. I don't have the time or the energy to drive myself nuts to lose said cellulite. But you can't, I mean, listen, let's be real. No matter what you do, okay, unless you walk into a dermatologist or a plastic surgeon and get something that is specifically for that, you're going to have cellulite. It's Which I'll happen. probably do one of these. Uh, me, same girl, okay? Me too. Like, it's going to happen. But you, it's something you have to accept. And I didn't realize, I mean, I know raising little girls, we have to be very conscious. And normally very I am. Very conscious. Like, but, there's no more looking in the mirror saying, no. oh, I feel and like I, shit. I did it the other day not realizing Ava was listening. And she goes, Mommy, I heard you say that you, you're not wearing that dress because your arms look so fat and you hate how your arms look. She goes, you're so beautiful. It, it humbles you. It makes you feel like a couple things. Holy shit, this kid is my biggest fan. Like, she also tells me I have the most amazing voice. I don't. She may need an, an I don't, test. but she loves me that much. Test. But my point is, is that you, when they're listening, when they're not even, you don't, you think they're not listening, but they hear and see every single thing. And it is so important. I wish I could embrace my body in a positive way and be like, yes, I love every inch of me. I don't. I don't love every inch of me. I do. I don't. I love myself. I have confidence in myself. But like, do I wish I had a little less belly fat? Do I wish that like my arms were a little more toned? Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I do. Okay. Well, it is what it is. Guess who doesn't have time to care today? Me. I was on my way <laughs> today? to work. Today? Just today? Just just today. Okay. I was on my way to work out and, um, you know, Aventura is a traffic nightmare to begin with. Now they, now they closed Miami Gardens Drive. So the two roads that we had to count on, we've only got one. So it took me about an hour and a half by the time I drove the four miles to get my daughter to school and get out of the parking lot. Yeah. I was supposed to go do some cardio with my best friend who is not here. And, um... It's okay, though, because she's coming to my house later. I'm having a party. But hold, anyway. Oh, thank okay, okay. You don't want to be there. Okay. Um, it's for toddlers to pee from. Oh, no. Right. I want nothing to do with that. So. Nothing. I, you know, I was counting on this beautiful weather and my new amazing leggings from Restless Soul and, like, looking hot in my and leggings. And wait, let's pause. What about our shirts? Can you see our shirts? We keep it realer than most. Keeping it real. Um, and so I was supposed to work out, and then I couldn't, obviously, because the day just got thrown off by this massive traffic, and it was just like, well, you know what? Oh, well, life goes on, when in the past, I would have, like, canceled my meetings right. and, you and pushed back deadlines yeah. for cardio. Are yeah. you kidding? 
Um, it's very important to take care of yourself, but it's also important to find the balance. Well, of, to be realistic. Right. Um, can we talk about some other mom truths besides that everyone, every mom and everyone has cellulite? What other things can we talk about? We can talk about, uh, you know what I want to talk about? I'm not married anymore, but I was, right? And I want to talk about the, the general tone at any table of women on girls' night is like, ah, oh, my husband's going to want to have sex tonight, right? It's funny you say that. Keep going. I like And as a single woman, I mean, I have a boyfriend, so I'm good, but like, Think about the girls who are alone, right? Whose husbands don't want to have sex with them because they don't have a husband. Like, right. I, I think it's really interesting. There's two total opposites. Of, like, there's no gray matter in this area. It's Correct. black or it's white. I agree. You either lose your sex drive after you have a kid right. or you don't. Right. And nobody talks about it because nobody wants to be the person at the table that's like, well, I can't wait for my husband to rip well, my clothes off. No, and there's also a very, very big difference that exists between men and women when it comes to sex. Men can always have sex, right? They can always have sex. Like, they're ready. Women, I feel like we need a little bit more emotional work it in, inspiration. Work it in. We need, it's not just about, like, the physical part. Like, we need to be inspired. And, like, I, you have to like the person. You can't just love them because you don't want to, ju- you just, that's a, it's a lot of work. Sex is a lot of work. I disagree. And so, wait, but if you're with the right person and you genuinely enjoy, enjoy it, I have sat at those tables. I've sat at those tables in past lives and been like, oh, God. And now I sit at the table and I, I am the one being like, what are you guys talking about? Like, I want to go home and have sex with my husband. But here's what Jason Sobel and I do, and it's our, it's our thing. We always have sex before we go out to dinner, before we Oh, yes, stuff. you could eat Always. More. Yeah. Yes, because you want to eat and you want to, like, have a good time and drink and not come home and be, like, a hot mess and whatever. You, you do it and it's like you're in your, you are aware, you're in your prime, it's great, and then you go out and have a great night and you come home and go to sleep. It's great. That's the attitude I can get behind. Yeah. That's totally the but attitude. But if you don't want to have sex with your husband or your boyfriend or whatever, you got to, like, really, and I'm not a therapist, I'm not trying to sound like an asshole, but, like, that's a big problem because sex is the, a connection point between you and your partner. Right. And what I had found in, you know, when I was still with a partner and after having a child, um, life gets crazy and sometimes it's the only thing that'll reconnect you or unite you or bring you back to like that common ground because like, what do you first start your relationship on? It's all physical. It's all physical. So when you take it back to that place, even when the day has sucked, you feel fat, you're tired, bills are late, There's always an excuse. There's always an excuse that can make you feel like you have an out, but I guess my point is if you're always looking for that out, there may be something bigger going on. Because listen, we all get tired. We do. But sometimes you got to rally. Yeah. you got to rally. And please don't be the mom at the table who acts like... I get home and I put on my lingerie and I bend over and my husband is just so happy with me because we know you're lying and we know what it takes. Right. So right. there's that. There's that side of right. keeping it real in motherhood. What right. else What else did we talk about? Um, <coughs> well, we talked about wearing Spanx on a Thursday. That's definitely part of motherhood. I never... It used to be in my like 20s and even early 30s, my biggest problem was like having to lay on the bed to pose my jeans. Now it's like I literally have a fit Every time I have to get dressed for something, there's clothes. It's like a scene from a movie. There's clothes flying everywhere. I have tears in my eyes. That was me before kids, when I was 12 pounds thinner and a so, whole lot tighter. No, so that's me now after two children where I'm not fat, I'm not overweight, but my body is completely different. It's completely different. My clothes are all the same size, but everything just fits differently, and it's very hard to come to terms with that sometimes, and we are our own worst critics sometimes. Yeah. Because I will get dressed, and Jason, and my daughters will, well, Sienna doesn't care, but Ava will be like, oh, mommy, you look so pretty, or why, why are you dressed fancy when I'm not in yoga pants? Why are you dressed fancy? Like, this is fancy. She saw me with my makeup and hair, she'd be like, are you going on a date? She, it blows her mind when she sees me, like, dressed. Um, so, I put yeah. on leggings last night just to like chill, right? Yeah. And I put on my leggings and I come downstairs and my daughter, my two and a half year old, goes, "Mommy, you go to exercise?" <laughs> and I was like, "No, I'm, I'm just trying to be comfortable." It was like a cold, rainy yeah. afternoon. I just wanted to chill. And she's like, "Put on sneakers, go exercise." And I was like, "So I did. I actually did. I worked out. It was nice." But um, anyway, there's other there's other things we, regarding appearance, right? There's a lot of maintenance that as women we do we have to do ridiculous things. Ridiculous things. You have to get things waxed that you don't want to get waxed. Like there's a lot of hair 
There's a lot of things that you have to take care of. There's something you and I can commiserate on, um, even though you're out of this stage on your life. When you're a single parent, yeah. And people are trying to make plans and include you. First of all, thank you for including me. Yes. Um, I am the Siggy Flicker of of the world here in South Florida, and I never want to be left out, like, ever. But at a certain point, as a single mom, you can't just snap your fingers and be free for the night. It's very hard. I actually wrote an article about it. It was one of my first ones that I wrote. And it is hard, because I think unless you're living it, you don't understand the logistical runaround that it takes if you want to have dinner with your friends or do something. And I have a rule with Ava that when I have her, I don't go out because I want that time with her. So if she is with her dad, that's when I make my plans. And most friends are very understanding. Some are assholes. Some are right. like, really? You can't get a sitter? You can't leave her with Jason? I've heard that a million times. And, and it's very what insensitive. What these parents don't understand is that when you go from having your child clawed onto every moment of every day to having your child only half the time, yeah. a part of you dies. Yeah. To get I hate to get all sappy, but like, you know, you're going from having your kid around you all the time, and then you have your child half the time, 50% of the time. That's yeah. basically every other day. Yeah. And while some people who are crazed with their children and work will say, wow, you get a break, I'm like, it's not a break. It's not a break. It's it is a heart-wrenching 24 hours where and you're you like... you deal. You find a way to deal. You like you occupy your time. by yourself and pretend you're happy when right. you're like, how many more hours till my kid is annoying me again? But I wish as women, we could be more empathetic with each other, even you, if we haven't gone through that, because it is a very difficult... You can't though, and you know, you I can't know. understand divorce, separation, custody... The whole battle, you know, yeah. even being, you're in a new marriage, I'm in a new relationship. Even that in itself is like an art form, having to handle that, like, unless you've been through it, that is something that truly nobody can Well, listen, that's with. another mom truth, like uh, all these things talking about motherhood. Life is messy. Even when life is good and happy, it is messy, whether you're married, whether you're divorced, whether you're separated, whether you have one children or ten. There's always carpool, there's always, there's always something to do. There's always a million things that you have to get to, homework you have to do, and so life is messy, and I think that if we actually like acknowledge that, instead of acting like we have our shit together all the time, not us, because we don't have our shit together and act like we do, we're very real, yeah, we want food, chips and guac, I'm, I'm easy, whatever you want, I don't eat pork, I do eat everything, got that face yes. Yes. Um, we're getting food, sorry, see, we're keeping it real, keeping it real, um, but yeah, I think that we have to embrace the fact that life is messy, and that's okay, and sometimes Michelle and I probably get up and we everything is on point. Our hair, our makeup, and we look great. Well, my hair is always on point. Your hair I get is it always done. on point. Right. Hair. I do just, not get my hair done. I don't. Um, but sometimes you wake but up. But your hair is on point today. Somebody just said. Oh, Jessica. Thanks, Jess. Thank you. That's because I had my father-in-law come and watch the baby while I physically got ready. So there's that. You know. Um, what other truths do we want? What other mom isms do we want to cover? We covered cellulite. We covered life is messy. We covered Spanx on a Thursday. We covered. How about when waking up at 7 a.m. feels like you hit the fucking lottery? Fucking lottery. It is sleeping in. 7 a.m. is sleeping in. It's like praise. The best is when you get up at 7 and your kid is still sleeping. Oh, this happens so to me sometimes, and I get like 20, 30 minutes by myself with a cup of coffee. I will trade anything. <laughs> so that's I'm sex tell you. we're talking yep, about. Yep. We'll trade sex for sleeping in. Yes. Same. For quiet time for with quiet coffee. Time. So we we start really early in my house. Not only with a baby, but with a child who starts school at eight o'clock. I have to leave my house by like seven forty. And there is nothing worse than waking up and it's immediately, I always say motherhood is like the amazing race. Every morning I wake up and I'm constantly like running. So now I wake up every morning at six o'clock in the morning, six o'clock. My older daughter usually sleeps for another 15, 20 minutes and that 15, 20 minutes where I have no children hanging on me, I have a cup of coffee, I answer some emails, I throw my clothes on, I put my moisturizer on, it feels like a fucking vacation to Bermuda. 15 minutes alone. That's it. We're five in the morning. Well, the, we and have a friend here, here. Come over here. Come over. So you Courtney get up at five. Ortiz is my photographer, and she actually gets up and runs two miles every morning. Sometimes with her kids. And it hurts Just to get up. That. It hurts, but it's worth it. That is that and is. And on worth the days, so like last night was my husband's birthday. So I, mean, I haven't. Okay, so I haven't. And you went here. to Billy Stone. You went to Billy Stone Crab. So we haven't been. Um, I haven't been drinking during the week. 
just like my thing now. I'm not drinking during Good for you. Day. But last night was my husband's birthday. Um, we drank a little too much. And so I like woke up late. Like I didn't wake okay. up early. That's it is okay. okay. Right. But you know what? Like um, my day didn't start as great. And I, I was like missing. Because well, you have a routine going. I was like it off. Yeah. waking up early. And like the, the, it feels like it gives me the feeling. For the split second that my alarm goes off at six, I want to die. I'm like, no, please. But then when my feet hit the ground and it's quiet and nobody's up and I have the house to myself, it is the best. It's like going to Target alone. I equate it to going to Target alone. That, there's not, that's a luxury right Going there. to Target alone, not only do you spend less money sometimes, um, but it is like just pushing that cart and not having a kick going, can I get this? Can I get this? Can I get this? Mommy, I want that. Mommy, I want that. No, but I think, you know, and then it's like the grass is always greener because for me, I always go out on a Saturday night. My ex has Bella on Saturday nights. And so there's nothing I used to love more than like the Saturday afternoon, like power nap, like yep. the disco nap, right? Yep. Like, you yep. know, I don't nap, but like I'd lay down, have a cup of coffee, take a shower, sit there Just and like chill. marinate yep. and like... Now I get to do that with I, I, nothing standing in my way because Bella's with Elliot. Yeah. However, I it's like with this sense of sadness, it's like I can't fully enjoy it because I know when I wake up Sunday morning, her little crib is going to be empty and I'm I'm empty. And so it's like it's a constant, you know, motherhood is just a constant. You want your it's like that meme like they drive you crazy all day and then you put them to bed and realize you only have so many more days until they go yep. off to college. Yep. That's it's true. It's true. All right, what else? We talked about, there was, what else was on our list? We were texting back and forth about this, and now I can't think about them. The 7 a.m. sleeping in is a great one. When was the last time you took a shower without an audience? Um, eight years ago. Okay, all right. Bella, my child, <laughs> will come in the bathroom. She'll bring an iPad. She'll bring a toy, and she'll yep. just sit on the floor. But, Mommy, I want to be near you, and yep. I'm in the shower. And then it's like, Mommy, get out. Mommy, hurry up. Mommy, I want a, uh, a popcorn. Mommy, I want... Paw Patrol, and I'm in, like, I just want to shave my legs. Do you, uh, did you see the thing I shared from That's Inappropriate the other day? I don't know. Um, the blogger, That's Inappropriate, she was, it's a video and she's in the shower, and she's videotaping, and she's, it's a scripted one, but it's, like, very true for all of us. Every five seconds, she's opening the shower curtain going, ask your father, why can't he get you a snack? I'm in the shower, I have shampoo in my hair. It is the same. I literally, literally was peeing the other day. I had the bathroom door closed. I just wanted to pee alone. Door opens and Ava pops her head in, and she's like, "Can I have a cheese stick?" And I'm like, "Is this real life?" Who it, is, it, is, it is real is life. It is real life, but that is we. I, I do not shower without an audience ever, ever. And and my husband thinks it's the funniest thing. If he's home and he's holding the baby, I feel like, "Oh, this is great. I'm gonna take like a 10 minute shower by myself." Not he's sure. opening the shower curtain, going, "Look at mommy!" And I'm like, "Really? Do you have to encourage his behavior? It happens all the time. I never get to be alone ever." Well, when you are alone, for all the wrong reasons, it sucks, but definitely alone time is, like, top of the list for, for your sanity. Mom. And I feel like moms are really, they feel bad saying it, like, oh, I just need a day to myself. No, or I just you need, need time to yourself. You, if, if you're not acknowledging the fact that, like, it gets crazy, which I only have one, and sometimes I'm like, I look around at my friends that have two, and I'm like, I don't, I just, I don't get it. It's a I lot, and Courtney it. has three. You have three kids? I don't know why I thought you had two. Three kids. I, and, I, and I give you credit because you're outnumbered. You are outnumbered. Yeah. I heard it's easier that way, though. Yeah. I mean, she, it, you know what you know. It goes by so fast. Right. Those after school activities, I found Yeah. It's a lot. Kids are a lot. I don't think people realize that it's not like you put the kids to bed and your day is over. I mean, I don't know what you what your routine I is. I make lunch. Right. I, I lay pack out the, clothes. Pack the backpack. I put, put away laundry. Out, get the snack ready. Like it's nonstop. And so there's this like joke that I've seen go around that moms don't lay, lay their heads down and go to sleep. They pass out. Yeah. And oh, I yeah, pass 100%. out every night, usually before ten o'clock, unless I say to my husband, I have to watch TV with you. Like I have to have time with you and make that effort but otherwise my head hits the pillow and I am done so so from from oh, Danielle's cup how about the days when you showered with your husband gladly and now if he asks I'm like get the fuck out of here <laughs> yep that's <laughs> totally really funny totally you you reach your touch threshold sometimes yes. it's not that you don't like, love your don't husband touch me. but you're like I just need like five minutes where nothing is hanging on my body and I can like be alone and then we can go back to that normalcy 
Yeah, thanks for sharing that. Totally, Daniel. Um, oh, we have more friends here. Oh, cool. Um, so, okay, I want to talk about with you. So, you have a child from a first marriage who yes. you have 50% custody of. Correct. So, half the time she's not there. Correct. But Sienna, your new little nugget, is with you all the time. All the time. How does the vibe shift in your house between you and your husband and the baby or just with you and the baby like how do you um, how does that work it's pretty much the same between me and the baby because we're together all day because she's not in daycare she's and I work from home so it's we're together all day and I think we're just used to that with Ava it's great because she's turning nine next week so she's very self-sufficient so even though she'll ask me for stuff because she knows I'm gonna like dote on her it's that like the way we train them to just constantly bother us for shit She's very good about keeping herself busy or playing with her Barbies or, you know, watching TV or whatever. Taking so a two-hour bath with her take, iPad. Oh, I'm going to make it, an, so, so this is what I do, and I'm totally, I'm not even ashamed of it. Ava loves to take baths still, but what she loves even more is to set up the iPad facing the back. Great. This and like is it's a mom started, It started with, like, a 10-minute show. And it's great because she's old enough to be in the bath. You don't have to worry about anything happening. She's totally safe. And I would like make dinner or like do something with the baby. Now it's escalated and she'll be like, Mom, can I watch a movie? And for a second, my moral compass is like, oh, is that okay? And I'm like, sure. So she will legit stay in the bath for an hour and a half, two hours and watch a full feature film. And the amount of things that I get done around the house is mind blowing. Yeah. So that pretty much happens on a regular basis and I'm okay with it. And feel free to pin it, pin it, seal it. That doesn't you happen in my house. Um, my child doesn't know how to swim yet, so I do not like right. no, the that's bathroom. Different. Different. That's the only thing I'm crazy with yeah. is the bath and the stairs in my house. Like, yeah. Bella learned to walk before I was in a two-story home. Stairs and now, are scary, children. Stairs scare yeah. the shit yeah. out of me. But but the it's interesting you asked about the dynamic. Like, so I'll let my child eat something off the floor in a public restroom. <laughs> but I can be in the bath alone. She comes. I won't even leave the bathroom to like get a cup of water, like nothing. So we're talking about people with multiple kids. I don't know how Courtney, or uh, I have friends with three children. I have a hard time navigating bath time and bedtime. That's my hard bath time and bedtime because they're on different op opposite ends of the spectrum. So the dynamic in my house... Is Ava putting herself to sleep yet? No. Crazy? I co-sleep with an eight-year-old. So the dynamic in my house when we have both kids... If Jason isn't home at like a normal hour where he can basically take over Sienna and I can focus on Ava, I lose my shit. I get irrationally crazy because I desperately need that second set of hands. And it's not because I can't handle it. It's because I want to give the attention to Ava. I want to give the attention to Ava that she deserves to like get her ready for bed and stuff like that. And I need Jason to help me. And so that's when I get crazy. If he's not home and I need to like ship gears for her, for Ava's bedtime, I turn into a lunatic. Here's another thing nobody talks about. Um, you, nobody wants their kid to be the asshole of the group, but also nobody wants their kid to be like the one that's left out or picked on. And so me as a mom and a super seriously empathetic person who is just emotionally tuned into everything, I have like legit anxiety. I stay awake worrying at night about the day that Bella comes home and was like, so and so wouldn't play with me or like she oh, said I'm mean or whatever and I'm, I'm, I'm like dreading the day because I'm going to need therapy. So I'll tell you because we go through it. We have, we have had bully situations and things like that. And when they're really little, it's hard for them to understand how to stand up for themselves. And you don't want your kid to be the one that like puts their hands on someone else. But I'm a firm believer. But. I'm a firm believer. But. That if someone puts their hands on a child and the teacher doesn't intervene and do something about it and it continues to happen, I have flat out, and so has her dad, have said to Ava, listen. If someone pulls your hair, hits you, does something to you, you tell the teacher, and it doesn't get better and it keeps happening, you hit them and you hit them back harder, and I will handle the consequences. And I firmly believe that. I don't believe in violence. I don't believe in putting your hands on someone. However, if someone messes with my child, I don't want her to stand like this in the corner and, like, take it. I want her to, like, know that it's okay to defend herself. I just want to shift your attention one second, Rachel. Yes, Guys, what? Hold on. what happened? I'm just having a moment because Oprah and that one yeah. are Rachel Ray. Rachel Ray are in the middle of doing whatever they're doing on TV, and um, I just feel like we're we're on we're on our way. It's like a parallel. It's a parallel. We are living parallel lives, lives right now. And my chips are coming, and I'm so excited. Oh, they look really good. Um, so we're gonna dig in. We're gonna show you guys some. We'll it's show you guys beautiful. Are there pink chips in here? Are these pink? Yeah. 
the chips are pink. Oh, love. This is love, orange. Love, love. I think it's orange. Orange. And wait. Tell you guys what's in that sauce. Oh, oh, yeah. What's in this? So okay. Can... So wow. that's, um, that's our house guacamole, and then it has a grilled pineapple, mango, mandarin oranges, and pomegranate Don't seeds. ruin it. I'm not ruining it's it. It's beautiful. It looks delicious. Awesome. And, and then these you. are um, haritos, the Mexican soda. I've had those. Mexican Great soda. Oh, my God. We are going to be like, remember the scene with Magda and something about Mary where she's vacuuming because she took speed? That's what's going to happen. Yeah, that's after, like real sugar cane. There's no uh, hyper <laughs> I'm going to be Charlotte in Mexico when she put pit seed in her pants. Do you remember that? <laughs> yes, of course. All right, so the other thing that you just made me think of when we were talking about all this mom stuff is I think that whether you're divorced or, or whatever it is, you, you have to co-parent, right? You have to co-parent. You have to fix Oh, cheers. Cheers. Hold on. Hold on. It's a photo op. Um, whether, hold on. I had to put it in my mouth. That's what she said. Um, weather. This is very good stuff, you guys. Very good. Very, very good. I'm gonna have a hard time talking and still eating it because I want to like put my face in it. Um, you have co-parenting. You have to have someone to co-parent. It's I mean, you don't have to. It just makes things a lot easier if you have the opportunity. However, I will say what is incredibly crucial to me for my sanity as a mom are my mom friends and my girlfriends because the amount of information and commiserating and empathy, it's very different than what you get from your husband or boyfriend or girlfriend or spouse or baby daddy or whatever you want to call it. It is a completely different level because mom friends, you can have this like unspoken connection where you can basically, if you're the right mom friends, you can say anything, there's no judgment, you can have these conversations and share information and it makes parenting a hell of a lot easier. But that's I think. find the right mom friends. Absolutely. And so I'm very, like you, I'm very fortunate to have a group of girls, some of who are here today, who are like, I could say anything to, I can look like shit in front of, I could be super real with, and it is, I, I truly, as, as a person who's parenting alone, well, I'm co-parenting, but just in different homes, it is the greatest thing to be able to like, just vent about that. And I was walking the circle with my best friend the other day and I'm telling her about like what it actually feels like on the mornings that I don't have Bella and how, yeah, sure, it's easy to get ready, but it's like, it's like it's an something's empty, missing. Something's, something's missing. missing. Right. And to be open and honest and real with those kind of people, like I don't understand, if you don't have a good group of mom friends to get you through motherhood, you better have a good therapist. And I'm gonna tell you this too. If you're a mom, and I know it's hard sometimes because you go to mommy and me and you go to, you start school and you meet these women and you feel like, oh my God, this is like my, this is who I have to be friends with. These are the people that I have to have in my circle. It's not entirely true, okay? You should always be civil. You should always be polite. You should always be friendly. With time, you find the right ones. Right. But here's the thing. If you have, if you're surrounded by moms who are like fake and you're not getting the, the reciprocation that you want, those aren't your people. They're not your people. And it's okay for that to happen. It's okay to admit that. It doesn't mean you have to be mean and call people out of your life. But even more importantly is to find your tribe of moms who are like you. And you don't all have to be exactly the same. Maybe one only uses everything organic and one lets her kitty things off the a public floor. It doesn't matter. The point is, is that as long as you're real with each other and you're honest, I have no time in my life for people who nod and smile and don't tell me like it is. Like I, I think one of the reasons you and I get along so well, as we said before, is because we're very real with each other, right? Can you imagine being any other way? She's very real with me. She likes to really point out the things that other people won't point out. Or like really just but call I me out on same. my bullshit. But, but I yes. want the same. Like and the I... same is true. But I think, you know, for me personally, it's like, I've got a lot going on. Like, I'm on my own with Bella most of the time. I'm working, like, nonstop. I'm a workaholic. And so to have friends that understand, like, hey, are you working this afternoon or can we do our play date today? Like, that is so meaningful. Mm -hmm. I mean, so much that it, at the end of, like, a horrible day, it's like, thank God I have the friends that I have. Do you know who some of my favorite people were when I had Sienna? And I'm home alone after Jason went back to work, and I'm 40 with a baby. Hadn't done it for eight years. My favorite people were the ones who didn't call me or text me and say, "Hey, what can I get you?" Or they just showed up with lunch, or they showed up with food, or they showed up and said, "Go take a shower." Like, if you have women who can tap into your mind, they know what you need, yeah. and they just do it rather than like asking for permission. Those friends are very rare. Very rare. But when you have them, you do not let them go because that is the best. They make your life so much easier in a variety of ways. Right. And for me, 
having all my friends, you know, still in marriages, having second babies, and still have them understand and be patient with the fact that I'm going through something major this year. Like, this was a life-changing year, um, and I'm just doing my best to try to get by. It's and so you're doing phenomenal. Thank you. You are. Thank you. But, you know, a lot of moms will say, yeah, I have mom friends, and I go to Mommy and Me, and I go to lunch, but, like, not a lot of moms will tell you that it is very hard to find your real mom tribe. And your mom tribe is very different from, like, your personal tribe. Like, the people I'm friends with now... It, the, the friendship was really driven by the kids, and then we find like these unique qualities that we love about each other, but it's very different from before. But sometimes that doesn't happen. The kids mesh and the parents don't, and that's okay. Like It's normal. It's fine. You don't have to be friends with everybody. You know what I'm noticing this time around? It's very interesting. When Ava was in preschool, I made like two or three really good mom friends that to this day I'm still in touch with. We got together for dinner. I didn't feel a lot of connection with a lot of, I didn't feel like I had a lot in common with the moms and I didn't know what it was because I grew up down here. It's not, I don't know. Now I'm at a different place doing Mommy and Me with Sienna and I love the moms on me. I love them. It's not different. They're, they're, a lot of them are significantly young, younger than I am because it's their first baby or even if it's their second, they're just five, seven years younger than me. But everyone is so low-key that I see the difference in the experiences and I already can tell there's a number of people that I know I can form friendships with. And that feels really good when you... I feel alone sometimes as a 40-year-old with a baby yeah. when none of my friends are having babies. So I don't have a ton of people to call on and be like, hey, do you want to go sit somewhere while our kids scream and whine and we have a story? Starbucks. Like, I don't have a lot of people like that in my life, so it's nice to, like, see that they are out there, and I can still have that tribe the second time around, um, but it's important. I think it's good for our sanity to have people You know like what that. else I love about my group of friends? Tell and me. I keep saying this in a meme, too. Tell me. I can't stop My friends me. are the friends who, if my child does something wrong, they are comfortable enough to call her out, and vice versa. If one of their kids does something or drops something on the floor or pulls Bella's hair, like, it... We're, we're all comfortable with enough with each other to be like, hey, like, yeah. you know, and I just feel like if that's not a true mom friend, they're going to be so pissed. Like, I, I hate to bring this up, but Real Housewives, I don't hate to bring this up. Yeah, Real Housewives of New Jersey last night. Did you oh, watch? I watch it, no. Okay, so spoiler alert. <laughs> Teresa and Melissa are starting to have problems again, but it comes what? from the fact that Melissa's trying to tell Teresa how to parent. And saying like, oh, you're not strict enough with Melania or whatever, and the kid is kind of you can be a brat, though. Right. But, again, not your fucking business your if you guys aren't, like, true blue right. ride-or-die friends, which they're not. They've always had issues. Right. And so I think it takes a special type of friend to be able to make that judgment call and have you not get offended. I totally agree. And that comes with time. It comes with comfort. But it also comes with kind of meshing. Because you can be friends with someone for 10 years and never kind of get to that point. It comes, there's a certain comfort that you automatically connect with someone and you know they're not overstepping boundaries. They have your best interests at heart. They don't want your kid to be an asshole. Right. And it's also the delivery. Like if someone yelled at my kid, oh, I would that backhand happens to me them. At a birthday party I would once. backhand them and they would, they it would see to be someone I, I have zero patience right. for. Right. But if someone says like, hey, sweetie, no, don't do that. I'm okay with that. I'm okay if I admit, if I don't. If I'm not paying attention, you see something, that's okay. Um, but I, I do have a problem with the people who discipline their children, my children, the way they're disciplining theirs. It's not your child. Oh, hey, Mom. Arlene's here. Should we tell the story again about Arlene? Which one has your back 10 years, 20 yeah, years And then we'll tell the abridged version. Sh short story, if you missed it last time, is that my mother is like the queen of holding grudges. And there was a camp counselor who was mean to me when I was eight. And we saw her 10 years later at a bar mitzvah. She was with a server. And my mom called her over and gave her a piece of her mind. I like that story. Yeah. I really do. Yeah. She would do it again if she saw her now. My mom wouldn't. That's just not who my mom is. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure she has my back, like, in her mind, but, like, that wouldn't happen. Yeah. Speaking of having a big mouth, we I'm obviously have... Fine. You have mandarin, I have grapefruit. It's I have mandarin. full of sugar. It is full of sugar. It's cane sugar. I mean, it's delicious. I would be sick if I drank the whole thing because it's so sweet. I don't think But it's good. It's not. Um, so, it's not good. It tastes like syrup. It's soda. It's supposed to taste like that. Right, so, it's supposed to be. I don't even drink Diet Coke anymore, you guys. I have mandarin and she I'm has I'm sticking with food. my alcohol. I'm sticking. Um, go ahead. What are you saying? Um, 
I forgot what I was saying. Oh, so I used to be the one who like never wanted to piss anyone off or never like opened my mouth or, you know, just kind of like go with the flow and not really create waves. I can't picture you like that. I, well, because you met me after I had my child, Rachel Sobel. You met me after life got real and I had no choice but to like, you know, you become an advocate for your child, for yourself, for your sanity, for everything. You become strong in ways you didn't realize you were going to become. And one of the ways that I became strong in being a mom is like finally learning to speak up for myself or stand up for myself or say no. And can or, you imagine, do you look back on your life sometimes and you're like, how was I ever, like how did I endure horrible, that or how did horrible. I take that? I know, it's crazy. You can't turn back. Once you find your voice and you don't give a shit, and you're going to speak I had behind. horrible friends at one point in my life that were like, you know, I'm very nice and I'm very like passive and I'll like say, I don't know. I got shitted on for a while and now I think back like my daughter having those kind of friends, you got to be out of your mind. So we have this conversation about girlfriends all the time because my older daughter's eight. She has her gaggle of girlfriends and the four of them are great, but there's some outliers who cause her a lot of stress. And we have this conversation about mean girls all the time and I say to her you know you have to like when someone does something to you and is mean to you it doesn't first of all you're going to be girls the rest of your life I tell her all the time they're in elementary school they're in middle school they're in high school they're in their 40s there are mean girls everywhere but you have to deal with them the right way you have to shut it down and not even give them air time well here's here's my take on it because yes it's going to happen and it's horrible but like being an adult and seeing you know Looking back on like the mean popular girl in high school, she's now, I mean, I feel sorry for her. Like she obviously is like the hot mess of the world and like whatever. But kids can't see outside of like what is now. And so the, the conversation I always have with my boyfriend's daughter who tells me like all the drama that's going on in school with the girls, I'm like, look, the one who's talking shit and making you feel bad, that's the girl who either has something going on at home right. or she's super insecure right. or she's jealous that you're pretty or like right. it's understanding that like even when we're grown women and people are acting a certain way like I was probably such a bitch to people at certain times last year because I was going through what but was the end of the marriage but that's a different situation but somebody's always going through something somebody and so if you can get your child to understand that that person who made you feel like shit, you know, like my mom would say, well, they feel ugly inside. It's the truth. But I do think we have to teach our children, especially little girls, not to take it. No. You no. can't take it. Like, you That's don't like, have to be it. mean back. Don't you be mean back. You have to understand back. where it comes from, though, and right. you have to learn early on. Yep. It's not a reflection of you. I agree. I totally agree. Now, yes, there are plenty of people who don't like me. Think I'm too outspoken. I'm not everybody's cup of tea. Think, you know, who is she? You know, boss babe. I, I hear it all, but guess what? Do I care? Are there opinions paying my bills? Um, is there anything they can say that will stop my hustle? No. Don't, do you, I don't know if this is just a sick thing that I have, but those people, like when I have people who I hear saying negative things or give me work harder, make me work your haters harder. Be your yes. Um, we have Nina saying we never know what's really going on with other people. That is true. the truth. And I heard that so much. Very true. After people started to realize that like I was separated and everyone was like, oh, I had no idea. And I appreciate that because I never yep. want to be the person that walks around acting in a way that would make you think I have something going on at home. Yep. And Nina just echoed, she said, I'm not for everyone. Listen, nobody's for everyone. Nina, you're for me. I'm not for everyone. She's not for everyone. Like, it doesn't matter. You, you don't have to please everybody. I'll tell you what is for everyone. The chips and guac? Yeah, but we, no, that's for me. <laughs> we have a few minutes left and there are a few things I want to highlight. Tell me. With the end of my marriage came like this lull in my motivation. Like I just wanted to chill. I didn't want to be out hustling so hard. And I took a few months to really re gather my thoughts and power down and focus on my child. And now the motivation's back and I'm out there working my ass off again and loving every minute of it. Um, I made the cover of the Daily Business Review. I know, it's amazing. Hello. Amazing. Not only that, we have a friend here today, Eileen, Dr. Cohen, can you come on over here, please? She was just going to eat chips and look at you like You can bring your chips or... It's not a sign. You need to eat it after. Eileen is a client and friend of mine. She's a psychotherapist, um, an amazing blogger and writer. She's been published everywhere. And she just released her first book this week. I'm really excited. Amazing. And this kind of goes, the theme is perfect for moms because it's about being a people pleaser and how to cut ties with that kind of 
frame of mind that you have to live your life pleasing other people in order to be happy. Yes, it's very easy for moms to do that. Very easy to lose yourself in taking care of everyone else. And this is the book you need to read to really help you break that cycle. Because we all go to bed at the end of the day wishing we had done more for ourselves. We're so busy taking care of everybody else that sometimes you lose sight of what you need most. And this book will help you get back on track. And where do, where do people get it? Where they can get it, it on Amazon, Google, Barnes and Noble. And the title is called When It's Never About You. You're welcome. I'm really excited about it because it's doing really well and it just came out and she's got a PR team that's going to like blow it up now. And you know, just remember the little people. We'll be here. We'll be here. Now you can have your chance. Um, and so there's that. We've got that going on. Like Rachel and I said, we have a big project in the works. And I'm hiring. And we need an intern. We need an intern. If you want to be a social media intern for the Keep It Real Moms and help us stay above water with our Instagram and all that stuff, if you're a college student and you want to get college credit, we will sign all the paperwork. We, we need an intern. But I personally, for my business, I'm looking for a creative marketing assistant. That's exciting. Right. So Spencer and I sat down the other night and he was like, okay, tell me what this person needs to do. So this is the like general summary. You need to know how to write. You're going to get writing tasks. You need to know how to handle and field um, client communication and prospective client communication. Answer my emails. Handle my calendar. Tell me, Michelle, you can't go to that client in Boca today because you have to be in Fort Lauderdale at 2 o'clock. Um, take initiative. Be like, here's a great idea to help you need, you, you need a handler a little bit. I need me. Yeah. I need another me. You. I need another me. Do you know another me? No, I mean the world would implode if there like was Beyonce, a Like Beyonce, irreplaceable. Yeah. To the left, to the left. But if you're, if you think you can, box to the left. yeah. I need help. I'll, I'll do anything to find someone. All right. If you know someone, send them our way for Michelle and for us. We definitely need an intern. Because if I'm keeping it real, and I can't do it all. And before we go, and we sh we're gonna eat really good food. It's much better to eat it off camera. But before we go for real, do we want to talk about what we're gonna do next? Yes. We are going to be in Boca on November 8th. November 8th at one of my favorite, favorite spots. It's called Relish and More. Their original spot is in West Palm, but they have a, a place in Boca on, um, in the Fifth Avenue shops on Federal in East Boca. And everything there is delicious, but what they're really, really known for, at least what I know them for, they have the most, I'm gonna get Michelle to, to drink it. She's gonna fight me every step of the way, but she's gonna take a sip. They have the most ridiculous milkshakes you have ever in your life, in your life. I'm talking like full Hostess cupcakes on top of the shake and then a bunch blends it in. It is like amazing and their food is delicious and much to your surprise, Michelle, it's not just burgers and fries. They have salads and quinoa and all kinds of healthy stuff. So we're going to be there um, on November 8th. Same thing for lunchtime. We'll post about it. We'll have plenty of time, but that is our next stop. And then later in the month, we are actually, Rachel just told me, going to be at Apothecary. And we are going to be teasing a very special VIP event that they are having in December. So we will be there to promote it. Awesome. So if you're hungry, you want to join us for lunch, you'd like to keep it real, and um, you just want to hang out, you know where to find us. And we have one special. Rachel, where is she? Oh, there's one margarita special I know she wanted us to talk about. I don't know what it was. It is this margarita. Oh, the question? Yes. What's the, what's the margarita special you guys have coming up? I know Rachel wanted us to talk about it. Um, for the day of the Yeah. Yes. Yes. Keeping it real. Keeping it real. We have no clue what's going <laughs> I don't on. Know. I don't know That's really on. real. All I know is that my stomach is growling and I need this food in my belly. So I'm having Bella's best friends over this afternoon to paint pumpkins. Yes. Outside. Outside on the driveway. I, I bought five pumpkins from Whole Foods, which are very expensive pumpkins. I won't do that next year. So she was saying yeah, about Margarita Fest. Margarita Fest. Yeah, when it's is on it? The 11th. Margarita Fest on the 11th. November, November 11th. Here? Yeah, it's here. Right. We're going to have a whole block set on the off. Oh, it's a block it's party. It's a block party, yeah. So um, there's going to be a bunch of different vendors um, coming into the companies, and everybody makes their own margarita, and it's like a margarita contest. Okay. Oh, so my make God. Your margarita, I am margarita contest, November 11th, here at Taco Craft. Yeah. Margarita Fest. Lots of vendors. What's your name? I'm Melinda. Melinda, this beautiful bartender, will Melinda, be here. Melinda, come in the shot so we can see you. I love her. She let us come behind her bar. She let us invade her bar. We touched all of her bottles. Yes, yes, we that touched her bottles, cool. and I felt really cool, and we <laughs> kind of downgraded her coolness a few nights. That's the closest. So that's the closest. But I we're going to come have margaritas. With I can't do it. We're going to call it margaritas with Melinda. Yes. I like that. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, thank you guys for joining us today and catch us November 8th at Relish. Come check out Taco Craft. Everything is delicious. And as soon as I press finish on this, we are going to shove food in our faces and keep it really real. But thank you guys so much for joining us today and for those of you who came out. And we'll see you next time. Bye.